while the mod organizers of the conference had a poll whether guidelines are practical and whether they are used. We have certain freedom till 2022. Um, these guidelines are just recommendations and probably um, life become tougher after 22. And currently you see uh, Ruska and uh, Health Ministry recommendations uh, are verified and they are quite popular in real practice. How, however, some um, experts, uh, they ignore any recommendations uh, and even their own experience, uh, and uh, some are guided uh, by uh, university books and uh, uh, textbooks. And this is unbelievable because the current times are fast changing. Anyway, diagnostics. The key um, challenge is uh, to uh, find uh, the radio melanoma, how to identify it. Um, if it's at an advanced stage, um, it's uh, in fact uh, almost self-evident. If you have uh, a bleeding uh, node uh, and it's major, then it's melanoma. But how to distinguish between melanoma and nevus? For oncologists, we have uh, Friedman's rule um, and and also for surgeons. However, for uh, but uh, for surgeons and uh, for others, uh, we have uh, um, this uh, A, B, C, D, E, and this is also what we recommend. For early melanoma, in fact, A, B, C, D is uh, relatively inapplicable because small size uh, um, fall outside of the rule and rare aggressive uh, melanomas uh, like uh, nodular or from uh, the blue nevus, uh, they fall through uh, the rule and we miss them out. But uh, among, uh, let's say, uh, general population, not only specialist doctors, uh, uh, Friedman's rule, if uh, it is practice, then we will have good outcomes. The uh, Diagn diagnosis setting criteria are first history, taking a history, physical uh, examination, and uh, sometimes uh, dermatoscopic uh, um, research because majority of oncologists don't have uh, such tools, uh, but they are faced with the task to uh, provide the diagnosis, especially under the COVID pandemic uh, restrictions. And the third element, uh, the uh, in vitam uh, pathology study of biopsy. We need it uh, uh, for morphology. Sometimes we very rarely, but we do incision biopsy as well. This is uh, the um, procedure and the sequence of um, providing health care um, in oncology uh, adult patients. So oncologist at uh, the um, outpatient facility within one day of setting giving a diagnosis arranges for uh, taking biology uh, material or biopsy. This is the health care um, memorandum has been that was already um, Signed, which means uh, the uh, general practitioners and uh, practitioners, uh, surgeons, uh, uh, or dermatologists, uh, when they have suspicions, uh, they uh, uh, can take uh, this um, steps uh, and uh, send patients further to the oncology care. But whether the plan is good, but whether uh, our oncologists uh, are uh, ready. They expect uh, that in the oncological service there there are dermaveterinarologists. Uh, However, if we look uh, at the standard of uh, equipping the uh, oncological office, uh, it does not provide for dermatoscopes, uh, which means uh, it's very difficult to do such a test and about half uh, of our patients don't have such an examination. But we, we made our poll and uh, uh, dermatoscopy is uh, done at least at uh, um, 
almost 70 percent cases when but it is prior to uh, recommendation to remove uh, the pigmented spot a clinical uh, case in moscow region a, a female patient uh, uh, coming to us in april 2021 uh, in uh, in this uh, serrated uh, uh, pigmented melanoma and there were by the time uh, metastases in groin but in november in 2018 uh, when uh, um, dermatologists sent it to the oncologist there was a comment by oncologists uh, this is nonsense uh, um, this is nothing to do with oncology so let us train our oncologists uh, uh, to be prepared to look uh, at such cases for early diagnostics that could have been caught right there so now um, we have to consider the volume the early to the right uh, of the disease uh, just uh, um, a very thin thickness uh, uh, 0 0.8 ta1 no ulceration and then you may get a patients with a very um, uh, developed uh, melanoma and uh, therefore studies uh, for the early testing the uh, diagnosis we do excision biopsy we determine the thickness by uh, uh, under Bertslow etc but for this story to the right you start uh, with uh, uh, cerebral MRI if we see this uh, developed melanoma and it's easy to get uh, it verified by cytology you can do the full um, diagnosis and examination including PET uh, CT and when it comes to signal nodes, uh, even for small, uh, thin melanomas, we can get uh, good results. When MRI, CT, ultrasound uh, show all good results, and even for thick uh, um, melanomas, all these uh, results may be good, but you can uh, raise this stage, uh, st stage up to 3B, 3C at 30% uh, of the patients. And that's why we do. We are pushed to do the biopsy of a sentinel lymphatic node. Um, we observe these patients, um, and um, we do not use new adjuvant therapy, unfortunately. And uh, and probably for the second uh, uh, two stage, we will be offered to do the efficient new adjuvant biopsy. Uh, I finish uh, the diagnostic stage in our small panel. I was given just 10 minutes and we move forward to surgery. Yes, yes, we are ready to move into the surgery. Surgery treatment, surgical treatment. Hello again. Let us talk about real clinical cases and guidelines available to us. What's the surgeon's role? Melanoma from um, surgical pathology became a systemic disease. Surgeons have a, cl a clear task, and uh, it is covered uh, in the guidelines. First, staging, both for primary and uh, when it comes uh, uh, to the collect and citer reduction, uh, prior systematic and post systematic. So um, when Professor Balch mentioned quite rightly, we do see the change in the melanoma treatment uh, paradigm. And he covered uh, uh, many challenges in the surgery. But Russia is kind of specific uh, when it comes uh, to interpretation of um, uh, guidelines. Uh, staging uh, is done under AGCC, American Joint Committee on Cancer. We see that uh, Russian guidelines follow these uh, staging. Primary uh, tumor requires us uh, to take uh, the good materials for parameters uh, like thickness, uh, ulceration, and some extra uh, parameters to be discussed further. So surgeons must, must take a uh, good biopsy uh, for morphologists to provide the diagnosis. This is a poll that we had at a conference in 2019. 
we know that we have to do punch biopsy, excisional biopsy, and it must be done. Uh, when we see objective uh, indications uh, via dermatoscopy and uh, clinical examination. Half, uh, look at the poll results at the bottom, half of our experts, we uh, polled uh, doctors that biopsy and uh, uh, local uh, anesthesia uh, with the minimal uh, um, volume, for example, punch biopsy, are not uh, shall not be done. So we have these uh, myths that are not demystified yet. So therefore, we do not have very often good material uh, to analyze uh, at our institutions. Of course, we look into uh, anesthesia, local, of course, it must be used. And uh, with the minimal recess, uh, when it comes uh, to basal uh, Collector excision, of course, will impact the outcome. Nadal nodal basin must be considered. Our um, experts uh, do not uh, seem to read uh, international practice, but they do not read uh, even Russian uh, guidelines. Thin uh, melanomas. Uh, um, are exceeded, um, are removed like this, and later on it's very difficult to improve the aesthetics. Uh, the treatment uh, program may be even fish finished after biopsy. If uh, uh, it was done adequately, then uh, even five millimeters uh, it is good. So uh, after metastatic uh, uh, observation is done, so we can continue monitoring the case, uh, but it's not done correctly the first time. We uh, are between two extremes. Either we do a hyper diagnostics at cases when it's not needed. We see patients with very thin uh, um, uh, melanomas but when uh, they already received uh, the um, cerebral um, MRI and and CT etc. However, we also on that extreme have a, a, a advanced uh, and um, as, um, and spread uh, uh, melanoma. And uh, when we have no time to lose, uh, they continue uh, all these um, uh, diagnostics procedures. Uh, and we do sector reduction uh, based on senator reason. Uh, so it's against uh, uh, the um, uh, nodal basin um, recommendations. We can do uh, N category if uh, uh, there were uh, lymphatic um, nodes, nodes removed. And what are the true indications uh, when the thickness is above uh, eight? Uh, uh, millimeters, 0 0.8 millimeters. The absolute uh, indicator is uh, the thickness above uh, 0 0.8 millimeters. So restaging um, in the eighth uh, and at the seventh edition uh, is different. Uh, and uh, patients from two C stage were moved to three stage, and now they can get uh, the contemporary adjuvant uh, therapy. And many centers uh, started delivering it. It's not only the surgeon who is responsible for the uh, biopsy quality. Morphologists must uh, follow the assessment principles. The material that surgeon gets must be appropriately further assessed and we get uh, the right stage to prescribe uh, adjuvant therapy. Another challenge uh, which Russia still struggles, struggles with total dissection after a positive um, uh, sentinel node uh, um, biopsy. CT reduction and um, lymphatic dissection after a positively verified lymphatic node. And we compared it to adjuvant therapy observation. It doesn't show it doesn't show melanoma specific survivability. The last Congress on melanoma uh, 
uh, one of the pillar in the um, staging and surgery, melanoma surgery and treatment, uh, um, said that uh, Gershwald said that we've uh, moved into the new era. Uh, where dissections are not done after the positive node uh, verification. Our uh, Russian recommendations uh, guidelines are very uh, careful on whether it's needed or not. Uh, you have to discuss it carefully with the uh, sexual reduction must be discussed with the patient whether you get any benefit out of it. Uh, say, and there is no benefit only when the patient uh, uh, has a uh, uh, the true adjuvant therapy and uh, uh, in nccn and uh, um, other recommendations show the indications for lymphodissections clearly uh, summing it up surgeons currently deal with staging and cipher reduction we have to give the right staging decide uh, on uh, neo adjuvant therapy and in fact the paradigm is shifting towards neo adjuvant uh, neo adjuvant uh, for the higher um, benefits and possible surgery afterwards we get a question from the audience uh, whether uh, sector reduction is needed there are uh, uh, when there is a total uh, complete response, then there is no uh, true indication for site reduction. Reduction. So we can, uh, we must consider the uh, spectrum of uh, indications uh, when uh, the lymph nodal basin is uh, affected or not. Shall we employ some other um, indicator indicators that we have a more spread uh, um, uh, lesion? Uh, sensible uh, sector reduction is possible. We must have uh, this uh, revolution, not evolution. We have to evolve uh, with uh, the updated, um, uh, along with the updated guidelines, uh, and uh, um, re reduce our sector reduction. Good day, distinguished uh, chair and um, uh, colleagues. As Svetlana mentioned, we polled uh, the regions um, and. Um, We've uh, presented the current situation. That's what is happening currently regarding the drug therapy. How many patients do really get the adjuvant therapy at melanoma or for melanoma? So we, the centers were subdivided into three uh, parts. Um, um, the centers where all the patients with indications get um, this therapy, and those uh, were between 30 and 50 percent of patients um, with indications to get them, and those with less uh, 30 percent. And uh, the obstacle is not the desire to treat or not, but uh, the availability of the drugs. Um, what drugs are to be chosen? We've uh, suggested to choose the uh, priorities, what to prescribe. The uh, first choice is number one. Number five was the, by the number of options. A uh, uh, difficult question. Blue blocks are the things mentioned in recommendations. Second stage or green blocks, sorry. Uh, um, uh, melanoma, uh, deformant. Uh, third stage, NTPD-1, uh, combi combined brachy inhibitors. If on stage uh, two there's an option that adjuvant therapy is not conducted, uh, uh, is kind of explainable. To an extent, uh, maybe it's melanoma with no alterations, and interferon doesn't provide such a big effect uh, to be discussed. Well, it is to be discussed, because uh, 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 thus the risk goes down significantly. However, there remain the uh, people with uh, uh, more modern uh, drugs prescribed, uh, um, uh, and uh, CPD1 uh, therapy. It's popular in the stage three and four uh, monotherapy but with BRAF inhibitors, which is not registered at all. And unfortunately, one of the choice factors, not uh, the first roles, but still the adjuvant chemotherapy, it doesn't improve the uh, results, but worsen the results of melanoma treatment. It's not recommended for some 15 or uh, 20 years. Um, now the issues. Uh, 
uh, regarding the clinical guidelines of uh, financing of treatment. Uh, this is what we can't change, uh, earlier prescription of effective uh, agents. Uh, and there was the discussion of a uh, stopping of therapy of metastatic myeloma after two years of treatment. Uh, and uh, uh, prolgalimab should be uh, used uh, in adjuvant uh, mode. As for the last question, the clinical trials will answer that in future. As for stopping of therapy of metastatic melanoma, that's one of the issues I'd like to uh, discuss. Um, now regarding our experience and uh, um, the modification of fragmentations in the uh, last year, that's the role of the adjuvant uh, therapy, considering the data that we've received just a fortnight ago and the choice of the uh, sequence of treatment. Uh, it's quite a big global issue. What should be the sequence of uh, systemic treatment, uh, whether it should be used in an adjuvant therapy right away or later, who should have a combination and who should have uh, uh, consecutive um, um, data. The first question about adjuvant therapy, SWOC trial that was published several weeks ago at ASCOM. And uh, it compared the pembrolizumab in adjuvant mode in comparison with the standard therapy, high doses of interferon and uh, ipilimumab. Well, time before progression, the difference is quite significant. Uh, you see it on the slide. As for the overall survival, there seems to be no difference. Uh, moreover, the patients that received pembrolizumab were later progressing. And, and, Treatment mode, the efficacy was lower. Uh, patients with other kinds of adjuvant uh, therapy had rather high efficacy with pembrolizumab in comparison with the registration trials results. Um, of interest is that in the disease three, uh, stage 3A with very good forecast with micrometastasis with sentinel lymph nodes, pembrolizumab made no difference from the standard, but the uh, um, uh, risk was above one, not below one. And uh, it means that not always we have the difference between the seemingly old and ineffective modes of therapy. Well, here comes the question. Perhaps we'll discuss it now. What's the best way to act? We have several options of adjuvant therapy, and there are studies that prove that modern, rather expensive therapy doesn't improve the treatment results in comparison with the old therapy methods. Um, in this study, of inter the following is of uh, uh, as following. Um, in pronalizumab, there were deaths uh, at uh, preventive um, uh, mentions, but there were no deaths in interferon, though it seemed to be more toxic uh, than the rest. Um, how would you treat this data, dear colleagues? Uh, and how can this data be used? You probably remember, several years ago, this was mentioned, immunotherapy is not quite the same thing uh, from the point of view of adjuvant therapy. We're used to uh, talk about adjuvant target and uh, chemotherapy when we kill metastasis, and thus uh, we worsen the condition of the uh, tumor. At the macrometastatic uh, stage, it's less um, uh, sensitive. Um, so as for the immune therapy, that's not quite so macrometastatic. Potential also keeps its sensitivity, uh, retains its sensitivity to immunotherapy. And um, at least a third of patients do have um, that. So of course, this option to not uh, prescribe immunotherapy to patients, but to wait for the progression and to follow up the progression so that its volume is not too big. And to have immunotherapy afterwards. Uh, I don't think um, that um, interferon should be prescribed anyway. No sense uh, to do that. It's a waste of uh, efforts and money, and it's toxic as well. But in part of the patients, one may really expect uh, uh, the progression and not prescribe it. Actually, the uh, prescription of adjuvant uh, target therapy seems uh, to be more reasonable. There's a different principle. Immunotherapy is uh, left for later periods. Uh, there was data on what uh, doctors uh, choose uh, from the point of view of adjuvant therapy. 95% of doctors uh, choose uh, the adjuvant immunotherapy in the United States, I mean. Uh, yeah, it's uh, less toxic, more convenient to control. I believe uh, we will not escape this uh, dilemma, though from the scientific point of view, we may try. 
I may have uh, the rest of my presentation. Same about nivolumab and um, uh, ipimlumab. Uh, there's no data regarding the overall survival. Now the treatment mode. These are extended results of uh, survival. Uh, comparison with com combined immunotherapy, with monotherapy, with anti-PD-1 uh, drugs, with monotherapy, with pilimumab, we see that uh, really the combined immunotherapy frequently provides better uh, results. As for the choice, who should it be prescribed and who should not be prescribed this therapy? Well, consecutively, we get the uh, proof of the idea that uh, the uh, patients with the wild BRAF mofensions uh, with um, uh, combined immunotherapy, which is not talking it doesn't provide additional uh, benefit from the point of view of both progression and overall survival. At present, the BRAF gene mutation is the standard of diagnosis. We always know, as a systemic process, what type of BRAF mutation we have. So that means uh, we have no data on ad additional uh, um, um, benefit for patients with mutation about the additional use of combined therapy for uh, patients with mutation. As for patients without mutations, there's no difference in the first line of therapy. Hence the question, should this option be used for clinical guidelines? or we can uh, limit the usage of combined monotherapy. It's more toxic, it's more expensive, um, or perhaps for patients with a wild type, and we have about 50% of those in the country, we can use the monotherapy with the same results. I disagree with you. We have patients of, uh, with high risk uh, with in um, non-BRAF mutation group, uh, where monotherapy works worse than combined therapy, then patients have a high chances to get a response with a bigger tumor a mass with metastatic liver lesion, etc. So I disagree with this statement. As for PD1, a positive patient with a small volume um, tumor, that's probably the optimal option for them. But that is not so for patients with high risk. Galina, what's your opinion? Please unmute. Well, we should use the knowledge about the presence of mutation for the choice of a combined or mono therapy. I believe that's incorrect. Well, I believe we have decided for ourselves that patients without a BRAF mutation with combination, we take them with um, uh, bad focused factors. But if there's a minimum lesion, normal LDG, then it's, to my mind, correct to uh, start uh, therapy for these patients with anti-PD um, antibodies, disregarding the presence of uh, BRAF mutation. Thank you. One more point. Uh, the latest innovation, triple combination introduction. This was uh, mentioned at the previous conferences. We have three triple combinations with equal efficacy. Two of them are considered a failure. One uh, provided additional benefit in the study. And there's a group, according to the preliminary data, there's a group of patients that get the maximum benefit from that. Uh, these are patients with the worst focused PDL negative patients with a high LDG level. And PDL positive patients. Uh, most beneficial with low level of LTG get the maximum benefit from this combination. Uh, we've discussed a lot at the expert council, and if time is left, um, patients may uh, speak up about it. Well, as for the PDL expression, it's uh, decisive. So should it be recommended? Um, uh, this uh, determination of PDL expression at um, melanoma. It's not recommended in practice so far. Thanks for the attention.